All right. Okay. So I feel almost a little bit embarrassed uh, after team crashes, not so much anymore. Um, showing you Athena because I'm pretty sure everybody uses that already, and it's I hope fairly easy to use. Uh, it, it's quite intuitive to use, but maybe there is a thing or two that I can show you uh, that is interesting for a couple of people. Um, so uh, someone dubbed it automated terminology harmonization extraction and normalization for analytics, but just to get this beautiful name of Athena. So you all know it's a goddess associated with wisdom, handicraft and warfare. OK, so I just take her as a, a fairly good looking lady who is providing us with wisdom and helps us with our handicraft in OMAP CDM. So the Athena server is hosted and maintained by Odysseus. We have a vocabulary server that we use to produce the vocabularies and maintain them. Then we release them to Athena and then they're hosted here. And here you can browse them and download them. Um, these are quite important resources that you can look up again uh, if you want to, but you probably know them already. So in the GitHub, we have these areas that would be uh, relevant for you in, in, the, uh, in the approach. So a couple of good to know things. Let me just go to my Athena if it's still there. OK, here we go. So this is where you start um, and uh, you can start by pre-selecting an area. When you do that, you get to the search screen and you have a filter set already. Um, that's one important feature that uh, many of you, I'm pretty sure, use and uh, which are extremely helpful, are extremely helpful in finding what you're looking for. So um, when you look at this, uh, you can limit it to, for example, standard concepts, which is something that you want to find very often when you are looking for something to map to. Um, so the search uh, is just back to this. The search is based on um, a search engine that we just adopt. So it's based on Apache Solar and uh, is uh, we run through a couple of, of different um, selections of uh, search algorithms. So we have a full phrase match and then we also run an approximate match. All of this you can look up when you go to uh, the GitHub for Athena and uh, here it's well we try to explain how we would apply a search, um, a search string uh, into these search algorithms. Um, down to a possibility to uh, create um, search terms that uh, also include misspellings or uh, stemming. So you uh, can also have a smaller part of the of the actual search term uh, used, and it it will be found. Um, back no hold on go back like this so um when we run a search term let me just go back here and rather find something else um let me go to the drugs and standard and uh let me just look for something like metaparol uh and i will find most certainly ingredients um, that are, and, and well, you will notice that this is happening sometimes as well, that Athena has a little bit of load. So we have um, an ingredient, uh, it's from the vocabulary Rx norm. And uh, when we look at it, we get to the details of the, of the entire thing. So this was easy because uh, we, just, uh, we just chose uh, a smaller term uh, and now it would show us all the relationships um, with that with that particular um, with that particular ingredient um, we can use um, other search let me just go back to this one here we can use other search um, uh, algorithms and and strategies so uh, we can use a wildcard search. We could use an exact search. 
And a little bit about this is actually explained here as well. So I don't know if you have noticed that. I actually noticed that only recently. Uh, it tries to explain how we treat um, certain parts of the search term. Um, so uh, what we're trying to do also is um, we would assume that things that um, appear very often in the index are less important than the ones that are less often, so which are kind of rare. So I think this is maybe a rather a, a spelling typo here. Uh, so uh, we would create a score, and uh, the score you don't see, but the score is behind this. If you look at this, the column sorting is clearly not re really by ID, but it's actually by score. We don't see this, however. If I do this, then I have it sorted by name. If I do this, I actually have a completely different sort right now than the other one. So um, here comes a small pro tip. When we do this, we can actually see the score, right? So now we can actually sort by score and that should give us this again. So highest score, that's what we saw before. Up here, you could theoretically also carry out very sophisticated, um, very sophisticated queries like this, if you want to. I never tried that, but uh, if you feel up to it, you can you can actually put in um, a query string in this format. Look it up in the GitHub. For Athena. Okay, um, just go back to this. Right. So uh, when you see unexpected results, be sure that uh, you're still sorted by score because um, if you sort by name, stuff like uh, special symbols um, uh, and, and uh, uh, digits uh, numbers will come first, and maybe not your search term. Um, it is really recommended to apply filters. So um, using that will reduce your uh, your amount of items to be found. And um, and as a result, it will be much easier to find what you're looking for. When we go into the details um, and we will see the relationships, uh, we will see synonyms if there are any. And uh, we would see uh, the hierarchy if the uh, respective concept lives inside of a hierarchy. Um, so uh, let me just see if that actually works here. OK, so um, we see the relationships to particular um, to particular products with a, has a brand name. Uh, we could switch over to the hierarchy. Um, and uh, because this is a fairly big list, um, we got to wait a little bit because it's now drawing this hierarchy. Uh, and we have certain levels that we can that we can look at. So that's the maximum level. It's actually going to each individual item. Uh, minimum just tells me I have so many ancestor concepts and so many descendants. And uh, then you can also look at which vocabularies are actually involved with this. So I have ATC and uh, we have these in RxNorm and RxNorm extension. Um, if there is a synonym, so multiple um, multiple ways of, of um, uh, defining this. So let's say we're looking for Arial infarction. Oops. It would be to be assumed that once we have it, we can find a couple of synonyms in the details list. And someone is stressing out my Athena. Let me see if the first one. Oh no, that's a non-standard one. Let me go back. It was remapped already. So standard should have been again my filter. Um, 
But here I see cardiac infarction, heart attack, uh, MI, and so on, and so on, and so on. And again, I could look at the hierarchy of it. Okay, that's the search and browse. Now, what's the download? Um, once I am logged in, I can go to the download page. Um, I have a preset of uh, certain quite important vocabularies, the default ones. And um, by the way, Craig, can you just signal me if I'm running out of time? I will. I have you about two minutes. Okay, that's a lot. All righty. So um, here from the download, you can create a download package or bundle. Um, and uh, that one would be sent to you in um, an email by a link. So I have done that. And um, these are the ones that I picked. And now I would have a link to download the zip file. Once I have that, um, I would go through uh, unpacking it and uh, loading it into my database. There's one thing that is uh, noteworthy. That is, uh, how would I work with CPT4? If I have CPT4 in my list, which I have, um, I will need to start a small, um, uh, a small file, a small um, executable that will collect me the names. So um, when we look at this, this is how an unpacked vocabulary would look like. And there is for Windows, there is a, a, a batch uh, um, file that would have to be executed. And in the readme, it tells us um, start the import process with your API key. And that's one of the first things where we come to something like a license restriction. So in order to do that, you need to have an, a UMLS account. Um, a UMLS account would be um, something like this. Let me just make this very quick. So um, you have a UMLS account, and there is something like an API key. You need to get that API key to run the CPT4. And I understand I'm already running out of time. Uh, just the last thing that I might want to tell you is about how to deal with license restriction. Um, if you do that, and that's something that you find here, so some of them are license restricted and um, you won't be able to download them unless you click on this and then uh, a request is sent to basically Christian Reich. He will review that and uh, you will need to present proof to him that you have licensed Medispan, for example. And then you will be uh, enabled and granted access to it, and you can download it. 